Our goal in this tutorial is to give you a broad understanding of how triacs work. Also, we will not go into the deep details of semiconductor physics or equivalent models. But let's deal enough with the operation of triacs to understand what its structure is and how triacs can be used. In the previous trainings of Dange Kit Channel, we got acquainted with some power electronic components such as thyristor and IGBT. In this tutorial, we will introduce other parts called triac. Triac is a high-speed semiconductor capable of switching and controlling sinusoidal AC waves. In DC switching circuits, unidirectional conduction is not a problem because all DC current is transferred directly to the load. But in AC switching circuits, unidirectionality can cause problems because when the anode is positive regardless of the gate signal, it conducts only one half wave, as in half wave rectifiers. As a result, in AC operation mode, only half of the power is transferred to the load through the thyristor. To achieve full wave power control, we can use a thyristor bridge and give a positive command to the thyristor gate every half cycle. We can also connect two thyristors in reverse parallel, back to back. Of course, this increases the complexity and the number of parts used in the switching circuit. There is another semiconductor component called triode AC switch, or triac for short. Triacs are a family of thyristors that can be used as components in switching circuits. But what is important about the triac is that these parts are bidirectional. In other words, a triac can be driven by applying positive and negative voltages to the anode and positive and negative pulses to the gate. This makes the triac a gate-controlled, two-quadrant, switching device. A triac works exactly like two conventional thyristors connected in reverse parallel, back to back, and because of this structure, the two thyristors share a common gate base. Therefore, a triac is a three-ended device. Since the triac passes the sine wave in both directions, instead of naming the anode and cathode, from MT1 for the main terminal 1, MT2 for main terminal 2, and G is used for gate terminal. In many AC switching applications, the gate terminal is connected to MT1 of the triac in some way, similar to the gate cathode relationship of a thyristor or the base emitter relationship of a transistor. Triac Operating Modes In this picture you can see the PN connection and the schematic symbol of a triac. As we can see, the triac is a four-layer piece of PNPN in the positive direction and NPNP in the negative direction, as well as three terminals, which act like an open circuit in the OFF state and block the current. But unlike the normal thyristor, the triac passes the current in two directions by being controlled by the gate pulse. Therefore, it can be said that opium has for possible stimulation modes to work. When setting up opium, we need to consider which quadrant the opium works in, this chart. If you're new to opiates, the chart can be a little daunting. But it has a simple and not complicated explanation. Quadrant refers to the four polarity combinations of gate current and MT2 relative to MT1. The x-axis represents the gate polarity, while the y-axis represents the MT2 polarity. All polarities are with respect to MT1. Since the gate polarity and MT2 are independent of each other and can be positive or negative with respect to MT1, we have four possible combinations. We define a position as quadrant 1 when both GIT and MT2 are positive. When the gate is negative while MT2 is positive, we call this quadrant 2 operation. When both gate and MT2 are negative with respect to MT1, this is known as quadrant 3 operation. And lastly, when gate is positive when MT2 is negative, we are operating the triac in quadrant 4 mode. In this picture, you can see these for application modes in the IV characteristic curve. 
Note that I and plus 3 modes are less sensitive than the other two modes. Instead, the plus I and dash 3 states require a larger gate current to initiate. We can design a circuit to trigger a triac with positive or negative DC gate current. These circuits show how an NPN and a PNP transistor can drive a triac. When the switch is closed, the transistor turns on, allowing current to pass to trigger the triac. Since the gate in either configuration is always positive with respect to MT1, the triac will operate in both quadrants 1 and 4. Since triacs require much more gate current for quadrant for operation, it is best to operate triacs only in quadrants 1, 2, and 3, and tie MT1 to it. The net effect is that the triac gate drops a current to trigger the triac, rather than sourcing the triac, the opposite of the previous circuits. This means that opium works in the second and third quadrants. These circuits show how this can be achieved using transistors. Applications of Triac The Triac is the most common semiconductor component used for switching and power control of AC circuits, because this component has the ability to turn on with positive and negative gate pulses regardless of the polarity of the source at that moment. This feature makes the Triac ideal for controlling a lamp or AC motor load. You can see the triac switching circuit when the switch SW1 is open, no current enters the gate and the lamp turns off. When SW1 is closed, a current flows from the source VG through the resistor R to the gate, and the triac conducts the current completely, and all the power of the sinusoidal source is transferred to the lamp. With the switch SW1 closed, the triac works continuously in two modes plus I and plus 3 regardless of the polarity of MT2. Of course, the problem with this simple triac switching circuit is that it requires an additional positive or negative source to drive the gate into the conducting state. But we can drive the triac using the AC source's own voltage as the gate command voltage. This circuit shows a triac in which a simple static AC power switch is used and, like the previous circuit, it provides an on-off function. When SW1 is open, the triac acts like an open circuit and no current flows through the lamp. But when we close SW1, the gate of the triac is activated by the current limiting resistor R and conducts shortly after the start of each half cycle, transferring full power to the load current at the end of each AC half cycle, and the load current will drop to zero instantaneously. But again in the next half cycle and as long as the switch remains closed, the current will be conducted using the opposite thyristor. This type of switching control is generally called full wave control, because both half waves are controlled. As you can see, if the switch SW1 is in position A, there will be no gate current and the lamp will turn off. If the switch is moved to position B, the gate current will flow as before in each half cycle and full power will be delivered to the lamp, since the triac is operating in the plus I and dash 3 states. If the switch is placed in position C when MT2 is negative, the diode prevents energizing the gate because the bias is reversed. Therefore, the triac in the plus I state works only in positive half cycles, and the lamp is lit at half power. As a result, depending on the state of the switch, the lamp may be off. Run at half power or keep it on. In another common type of triac switching circuits, phase control is used to change the voltage. For this reason, in this mode, power is transferred to the load, in this electromotor circuit, for the positive and negative half cycles of the input waveform. With this type of AC motor speed control, you can have a completely linear and variable control. Because the voltage can be adjusted from zero to the maximum applied voltage. AC control using triac is more effective for resistive loads such as heaters. 
small AC motors, and lamps 